Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Here is Chad Chancellor. Hello, this is Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group. Welcome to this week's YouTube Next Move Group newscast. Mississippi State looked amazing last week against Memphis. Absolutely incredible. We'll get to football in a minute. There's a lot to say, but let's talk about economic development first. So the first thing I want to discuss is the rising prices of industrial electricity. So within the news, you're probably hearing a lot about electricity. It's economic developers as Chamber of Commerce directors as elected officials officials who watch this video, you need to really know what's happening with the electrical rates in your community so that if existing industries call on you, you might have a plan of how to deal with them. And you need to know prices are going up across the country. So it won't just be going up in your territory or within your power company. They're going up across the country. So you need to know this to defend yourself, but also to figure out in your BRE program, how might you want to help your existing industry? So let me show you the information that's out, uh, most recent information that's out on EIA.gov. You will notice industrial sector electric rates have risen 18% since 2020, 18%, nearly one-fifth. They've went from 6.67 cents per kilowatt hour in 2020 to 7.89 cents now. That is a rise of 18% in the last two years. If you look at just the last year, they've risen 9%, so almost 10% in the last year. If you compare 2022 to 2021, industrial sector electric rates have risen from 7.26 cents per kilowatt hour in 2021 to 7.89 cents now. Electric rates are often in the top five operating costs for your manufacturer. So you need to know what's happening with your rates. Even if your rates are going up, know they're going up nationwide. So maybe if your rates are going up at less, that less of a percentage than nationwide, you may still have an advantage. Let me show you what's going on with renewables. If you look at this chart, again, you can find this on the uh, U.S. Energy Information Administration website, which is EIA.gov. But if you look, our electric generation by sources of all sectors, look at what's happening to renewables. They are going up. So if you look, basically coal in 2012 was 40% of our electricity production. Now it's down around 20%. So it's bit down by nearly half. If you look at natural gas, it's went from 30% in 2012 up to roughly 35% now. The bottom, you'll see renewal. Nuclear's pretty much stayed the same. At the bottom, you'll see renewables, non-hydro and hydro. Hydro, hydro stayed about the same as well, around 5 or 6%. Non-hydro renewables, though, have gone from 5% up to nearly 20%. So renewable energy is coming. This chart shows you that. As it is, it is driving some prices up. So as an economic developer, you need to know your energy mix, but you also need to know, are your prices going up? at the same rate as the rest of the country. Even if they're going up, if you're going up less than the rest of the country, then it may be something that you want to, you're selling to. But I for sure think economic developers need to think about this because this is a big, big part of a manufacturer's cost. So speaking of manufacturers, uh, our siting activity has gone through the roof. I believe we added four new site selection prospects in the last week. We, we Zoomed with two last week, just Zoomed with one today, and had another one express interest in us. So we're locating three or four right now and literally the last week added three or four new prospects so it seems like the siding prospect activity is for sure picking up you've probably seen we're doing executive searches right now in uh, kentucky kentucky lake which is over in western kentucky marshall county one of the absolute most beautiful parts of our country it'd be a great job for somebody doing them in far city arkansas far city is a great industrial town about an hour eh, probably 45 minutes to an hour west of memphis we're doing winston county alabama and we just added Orangeburg County, South Carolina, which is a great mid-sized county there in South Carolina. Uh, you will be seeing those. If you hadn't seen them already, you'll be seeing them come out soon. I want to congratulate Shreveport next, Ryan Cup, who's a Mississippi State guy. So after this, we'll transition into how good Mississippi State looked on the football field the other day. But Shreveport next is a division of something called the BRF in northwest Louisiana. And they took on a mission two or three years ago that they wanted to start recruiting small to mid-sized companies to that area that could have high growth potential. We helped them stand that organization up, built their website, did all kind of stuff for them. Hired Ryan Cup through one of our executive 
of Circus. We literally helped them stand that organization up. And today they announced a tremendous victory that I want to call attention to. Bioflight VR, a California-based company, has announced that they're locating in Shreveport their virtual reality medical training company that offers VR training for a variety of medical procedures. Their programs are currently used by hospitals, university, and medical device companies. So this exactly matches the mission of the BRF in Shreveport. It's exactly why Shreveport Next was built. I think they've got the right model. They're going out and finding small to mid-sized companies that have high growth potential in healthcare and manufacturing and other areas. Ryan's out there on the road calling on folks. And so I'm proud of this victory today and wanted to call attention to it. Ryan Culp is a Mississippi State fan. We talked yesterday. I don't know that we've ever had a quarterback look as good as Will Rogers did against Memphis. We absolutely dominated Memphis. We got up 24, 28 to nothing. I can't remember how much. And then, of course, we brought our backups in first game to get them playing time. Our defense looked incredible. You know, Memphis has a good offense. They could do nothing on our first team defense. Our defense looked incredible. Our offense looked unstoppable. Uh, I went to the LSU Florida State game. Sunday night, LSU doesn't look any good. I mean, you think we can beat LSU, we can beat Auburn, I think we can beat Ole Miss. We go to Arizona Saturday night. The ball game kicks off at 10 at night. I'm going to be up all night watching this game. Arizona beat San Diego State, and they were a big underdog. So Arizona looks to be pretty good, but Mississippi State is a 10-point favorite going into that ball game. I think we'll win. If we beat them, I believe we then get Bowling Green, and then I think we go to LSU. So I think we'll be 3-0 and going to LSU. But this team looked as good as any we ever had other than maybe the Dak Prescott team that got us ranked to number one in the nation. So we are very, very optimistic. Uh, I, I, the defense looked as good as the offense. That's what I'm so, so pleased about. Now, I mentioned that I went to the uh, Florida State LSU game Sunday night in New Orleans in the Superdome, and that was the wildest last two minutes of a ball game I've ever seen. Uh, LSU fumbled a punt. They were getting the ball down seven, two minutes to go. They fumbled the punt. Florida State gets it. All Florida State needs to do is knee the ball three times and kick a field goal, and they're up 10, and LSU's out of timeouts. The game is over. Inexplicably, Florida State ran a toss play, which a toss is far more dangerous than a handoff play because, you know, you got to catch it. You can fumble that thing. The ball got fumbled. Of course, LSU's got all their people at the line of scrimmage. So they got nine guys there to get the ball. LSU got the ball. Uh, inexplicable. I mean, the, the Florida State coach, it was one of the worst coaching decisions I've ever seen anybody make. But, but then LSU had to come 99 yards with a minute and something left and no timeouts, and here they came. They got to the one-yard line with one second left. We're sitting in the Superdome, and they had to review the play, come to find out. The kid's knee went down inbounds, which means the clock should have started after the chains were set. LSU probably wouldn't have had enough time for a play. They do like a 10-minute review in the stadium. You really don't know what's going on. They come out and say, we're going to give LSU one more play. LSU scores a touchdown, which gets them within one point. All they got to do is kick the extra point to go to overtime or go for two to win the game, which is what Brian Kelly should have done. His team was not as good as Florida State Saturday night. That's why I think Mississippi State beat them. They were not as good. They had horrible quarterback play. They weren't any good at all. He had a chance to steal that game. Even if he does it, if you know anything about Louisiana people, they like to go for the win. They're risk takers. Go for two. Even if he doesn't get it, he can come out of that game and look at his team, look at his fans square in the face and say, I'm here to win. That would have endeared him to those LSU fans. Instead, he goes for the extra point. Now, let me set this up. He already had one kick blocked earlier in the game, a field goal. He replaced his left guard or left tackle. I can't remember which one because that guy got blew off the ball and got the ball kicked. So he knew he had field goal kicking problems, and he still went for one. And guess what? Same gap. Florida State blocks it. Florida State wins 24-23. Florida State should have won by 10 points. They totally choked the game away. Their coach made a horrendous decision. If they'd have lost the game, he should have been fired. All he had to do was need the ball, and he runs a toss, and here comes LSU. It was incredible. So to the game I took, my best friend from uh, – we grew up together. He's a huge Florida State fan, and his son. And when we came – his son's nine years old. 
we come out of the Superdome, and there's a New Orleans or Baton Rouge reporter standing there interviewing LSU people about the game. And most of the people they're interviewing are drunk, you know, frat guys coming out, upset that LSU lost. And they saw my friend's son, nine years old, had his Florida State jersey on, said, hey, we want to interview a Florida State fan come over here so they interviewed my, my friend's son nine years old and he says as you will see from this screenshot he says you can't spell lsu without the l and loser and they put this on the broadcast and it's went viral it said like eighty thousand people see it since then so uh, i believe lsu will have an l when mississippi state plays them as well this week, of course, kicks off the NFL season. The Saints play the Falcons, our hated rival. We play them in Atlanta. From everything that I read, this may upset Josh Finn, and we should have did our NFL preview show this year, but I forgot it slipped up on me. So next year we're going to have Josh on our college show, and we'll do Saints-Falcons then. Everything I'm seeing says the Falcons is one of the worst teams in the league, if not the worst. The Saints' defense looked incredible in the preseason. We should beat them 10 points in Atlanta. Get off to a 1-0 start. The next week, we play Tampa Bay. Uh, Sean Payton has retired, so the only reason we won't get off to that start, because he dominated Atlanta, is if our new coach just isn't any good, and he may not be. Dennis Allen's his name. We'll see as we get into it. But I think the Saints will beat Atlanta this week. There's no better what place to start the NFL season than winning at Atlanta, getting 1-0. That would be pretty exciting if Mississippi State beats Arizona and the Saints beat Atlanta Sunday, and that's exactly what I predict. The Major League Baseball playoffs are starting to come into form. we got a month left in the season. St. Louis has went on a winning streak. They, uh, they're they now eight and a half games ahead of Milwaukee, so they're for sure going to win their division. The Mets have choked. The Braves have tied the Mets. Going to be an incredible finish there. The Yankees are choking. The Yankees were like 20 games ahead. Now they're only four and a half games ahead of Tampa Bay. So there's going to be several close pennants races coming down the stretch but one that won't be close to st louis they're eight and a half games ahead they play milwaukee this weekend assuming they beat them that uh, race will pretty much be over our golf tip of this week you know you can overthink golf i heard tiger woods interviewed the other day and a lot of teachers and experts will tell you that you need to pay attention to your grip pressure. How hard do you hold the club? I've heard people say on a one to 10 and make it a five. I've heard people say, hold the club harder with your last three fingers than your first two. I've heard all kinds of theories on this. They asked Tiger Woods, they said, Tiger, what is your opinion of grip pressure? You know, Tiger's the first or greatest or second greatest player ever lived. I'm Jack Nicklaus. What's your opinion of grip pressure? Tiger Woods looked straight at the camera. He said, I have never once thought about grip pressure. It's never even occurred to me to think about it. I just grip the club and swing it. Sometimes we overthink golf. If you're sitting there with a hundred different little ideas, listen to Tiger. Just grab the club, grip it however you want to, and hit it down the middle. This weekend is going to be a good weekend for Mississippi State and Health State. Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today.